So as you can see, there is no loom here anymore. It's all in pieces. So I know that you know <laughs> what I did. Hey there, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and today I wanna to tell you about the next step in what is going on with the Leclerc Fanny loom that I am restoring. So this is a loom from 1968, and in the previous video, I talked about uh, not knowing what I should do. I was kind of sitting here underneath the loom, trying to decide whether or not I should embark upon a project of taking it entirely apart, cleaning all the pieces, sanding all the pieces, refinishing all the pieces, and and putting it back together. Now, <laughs> as you can see, I have begun that entire process of taking apart the loom piece by piece, trying to keep track of where all of the pieces have gone to. Um, I have become intimately aware of the differences between the different pieces, and so I think, I think that I can put it back together uh, from memory. <laughs> So today I thought what I would do is I would share with you a little bit about the process so far, what I've been doing, and talk mainly about sanding and finishing the pieces, and then also a little bit about the metal and how I'm dealing with the metal parts of the loom. So as you can see, I disassembled the entire thing, took all of the screws out, took all of the metal hardware off of all of the wooden pieces so that I can get access to the entire flat surface and sand them. So you can see I've sort of collected some of the metal pieces here. There's other trays of metal pieces everywhere. Um, trying to remember which screws go with which section, trying to keep them a little bit apart. So after the loom was completely disassembled, I started to sand all of the wooden pieces. So I'm using the orbital hand sander or the orbital sander, um, electric sander, and for the flat pieces. And then I'm just sanding by hand for the curved sections around some of these uh, parts. But the sander, the orbital sander, makes it much, much faster to, to do. Now, one of the things that I discovered is that I was using sandpaper that was far too fine to begin with. And so I talked last time about how I had like some, I think I had some 180, but I have two 220, I have 400, that is all um, on the finer side and really not useful for stripping down the uh, finish off of these pieces. And so I've had to go down to like 120, uh, 150, that kind of sandpaper grit in order to get more of the finish off faster. You can get it off, it would just take forever. The other thing about using sandpaper that is too um, fine and is that you're gonna create a surface that is almost too smooth. It causes like a burnishing, like it burnishes the, the wood so that it prevents the oil or the finish from actually sinking into the wood. So you, you don't want that to happen. So um, using a higher grit, so using like 120, 150, 180 to go through uh, the pieces to prepare them for staining is very, very helpful and much more efficient. Now I will tell you that when I made that video last time, I did ask you guys, what would you do with this particular loom situation? And I think about, uh, probably more than half actually of the commenters were saying, oh, go for it, you should totally do it. Take it apart, finish it, strip it, <laughs> sand it down. So there was a lot of that, um, that sentiment. And then there was another side, which was very much like, oh, don't, um, don't strip it down, um, preserve the history of the loom, preserve the story of the loom. It doesn't matter if the parts aren't matching. And there was a little bit of that aspect. And I will say that as I started to disassemble the loom and as I started to sand the parts, I was sort of overcome by enormous guilt. Like I felt the weight and the burden of responsibility of taking care of this loom and making decisions for this loom that's 54 years old, trying to honor it, trying to do right by it, trying not to erase its history, its story, but at the same time trying to make it clean because some parts of it were quite dirty and quite messy. Um, especially I discovered that I think that this loom was probably in a room where somebody had decided to paint the room and maybe they didn't cover the loom entirely because there's paint splatter on the lower ends of the loom. And so I wanted that gone. <laughs> So I started to sand all the pieces and that extremely emotionally heavy feeling or that crisis feeling uh, came when I saw how light 
all of the wood pieces became after sanding. And I started to have a little bit of panic. I was like, oh my gosh, I've ruined the loom. I've taken away the history of the loom. It's gone. <laughs> it was a little bit of a panic. And so I had basically sanded half of the pieces at that point in time. And I still have, you know, pieces that have not been finished sanding yet, but I'll show you as a comparison. These are two pieces, the front pieces of the loom. Okay. So these would be two front pieces of the loom and one of them has been sanded and then one of them has not. You can see there's a distinct difference in the color. And I was extremely stressed out by this color being so light. And I thought, Oh no, like this is, this is not what I had intended, not what I had wanted. And so I thought that maybe the solution would be in the finish. So if I were to apply an oil finish or if I were to apply some sort of a finish that it would actually darken the wood itself, kind of like wet the wood. So the product that I've chosen for finishing is made by Osmo in Germany, and it basically combines oil and wax together in one product that you then apply to your natural wood. It has to be put on raw wood. Um, can't have any finish on it or anything like that. And so the idea behind it is that the oil would absorb into the wood and kind of feed the wood. And then the wax kind of sits on the surface and then forms not a film, but it forms protective coating. So you kind of like smooth it on. Um, you can brush it on, you can roll it on, you can wipe it on. Um, it seems to be relatively foolproof. <laughs> Yeah. I think that the only place that you could go wrong is if you applied it too thickly and then it wouldn't absorb into the wood. So the idea is that you would put it on thinly and then just put on multiple layers, thin layers, and it will coat very nicely. So in any case, when I looked at the treadles that had been sanded to the light color, and then I put on this Osmo finish to see what would happen, miraculously the color came back to the wood. It looks alive. It looks wonderful. It looks golden. It looks, it looks beautiful. Um, and so this is one of the pieces that has been finished with that Osmo, um, oil. This is the top part of the beater bar. I love this. You can see sort of the, the golden color of this wood has come back. You can see a lot of the patterning that's in the grain of the wood already. I love, love, love this. It's beautiful. And you can see here how if I pull up, this is the sanded piece. And then this is the piece that's been finished with just one coat of the oil so far. So this is the sanded piece and this is the other piece that I have finished. And you can see that the color does return. It won't stay light forever. I didn't have to panic. It's all going to be okay. So a lot of these pieces were never finished on the bottom side, on the underside of the wood. It was never covered in varnish or anything like that. So it absorbed the oil really, really nicely. Um, but you can see these are the top sides of the treadles. The finish has brought out a lot of like a beautiful patterning that's in the grain of the wood. So that has been really, really lovely to work with. Yeah. You can see, I cannot sand out all of the history of the loom. There are gouges, there are scratches, there are a lot of dings, but it's all coming along. Now, in terms of reassembling all of the pieces with the metal screws, what I didn't realize is that there was actually quite a lot of rust on all of these screws and all these metal pieces. And so somebody in the comments had suggested evapo rust and I tried this stuff and it is phenomenal. It is so amazing. It's apparently not acidic. It's apparently not corrosive. It just looks like water, but it's not, it's got something in it that binds to the rust and pulls it off of the metal and into solution. So basically what you're left with is the metal looks clean. The metal looks almost new and all of that flaking rust has basically gone into the solution and just stays there. So you can see, this is one of the hinges that holds together the back beam of the, not the back beam, the back, the back support of the fanny loom in order to make it a folding back beam. Um, this is the hinge that holds that together. And this was super rusted on both sides. And, uh, it's, it looks almost new now in terms of these screws, these long screws, these are the ones that hold the frame of the loom together. So there's 12 of these and they're not in bad shape. I wouldn't replace them and they're very, very functional, but I might just like 
spray paint the top again, spray paint it with that rust paint, just to make it nice and clean and tidy. Um, I was lucky I went back to the store and told them about the problem that I had with the previous can, and so they just gave me a new can. They just exchanged it. So I'm gonna try this one again. Hopefully I will be able to reassemble the loom and have this back up and running in maybe, maybe a week or two. <laughs> That's my hope. Hey guys, so as you can see, it's been a couple of weeks, but my loom is completely back together. I have reassembled the loom. All of the pieces have been sanded. They've all been finished with two coats of that Osmo oil. I thought that the loom was gonna look blonde at the end of the day, but after refinishing it and putting the oil back onto it, it's beautiful. It's gone back to this honey, amber kind of color. It's just gorgeous. I'm so glad that I did this. Now two spots where I was a little bit concerned about doing the sanding and refinishing. One of them was obviously this logo area. Now this logo feels kind of like a sort of a plastic decal almost. It's not a sticker, but it's almost like a, almost like a temporary tattoo kind of feeling, but that's been stuck onto the wood here. And I didn't want to sand over this obviously, but you can see how there's a little bit of darker color underneath the logo. And that's where I didn't want to sand too closely to that logo because I was worried that it might come off. So I sanded around it and you can see it's a little bit lighter up here, a little bit darker right here, but I think it's it's okay. <laughs> It'll be okay. I just wanted to preserve that. So there's another marking that's stamped on the inside of these pieces of wood and it basically indicates at what height your harnesses should be or what height the shaft should be. And uh, so I was afraid that as I was going to sand those pieces of wood that I was going to sand off that marking and then I wouldn't have that line indicating where to put the shafts anymore. So I think that the manufacturers used almost like a rubber stamp and they stamped the bare wood with this line and with this little indication. Um, and then they put the varnish over it. So when I sanded off the original varnish, I didn't lose the marking. So I was very, very thankful about that. Now I did replace the upper supports for this roller, the upper roller. And my original support was sort of broken. The plastic parts on it were broken off. And so it was a little bit, always a little bit skewed, a little bit unbalanced. So the other thing that I replaced was all of these roller cords. So the upper roller cords and all four of the lower roller cords. Now the original cords were getting a little bit crusty and gross. So these ones are nice and brand new. And it just makes the whole loom feel really, really clean. I have set up the shafts so that they seem like they're all very balanced right now. Um, and I can sort of treadle. but it will be hard to know whether or not this is all set up correctly until I put a warp onto this loom. You can see I finally put the sectional beam on the back warp beam and on the front, I replaced the cloth apron altogether. So I had to take this, the old cloth off and um, try to get all the staples out and then tack this new one back in. So this is really, really nice. Everything is beautiful, clean, Feels great, looks great. All of the color has evened out. Now, in order to get the loom restored in a reasonable amount of time, I worked on it pretty much every day. I was very diligent about it. I would either be sanding a couple of pieces and then um, I would be sanding during the daytime. And then in the evening time, I could, you know, do the actual finishing. So put the oil on those pieces. And then by the next day they were dry. So then the next evening I could put on another layer. So just very diligent about processing, you know, two or three or four pieces of wood each day. So slowly but surely it all comes together. Now, the one thing that I sort of failed to do as I was taking apart the loom was I didn't take a ton of pictures of the brake system. Uh, I didn't take a ton of pictures. I, for some reason, I just thought that my memory would be okay, which is really not. And so when I was trying to put the brake back together, it wasn't exactly working. Uh, <laughs> I did finally manage to figure it out. I had to cobble together some photos that I'd found from other people's looms from that era, uh, looking at the manual as well and trying to figure out how the break goes back together. It's been a little bit of trial and error, getting the right amount of play in order to get the back beam to release and all that kind of stuff. So I would advise that if you were going to do a restoration project like this, that you take photos of everything or that you label everything 
one of the things I probably should have done was, um, you know, when I was disassembling all of the hardware to put hardware, um, group them in little small plastic bags, Ziploc bags, and then label them so that I would know these are the bits that go with the blah, blah, blah. And then those are the bits that go with the blah, blah, blah. But I didn't, I just sort of disassembled everything and then put them in a big tub. <laughs> and then um, as I was trying to reassemble the loom, I was trying to figure out, well, I think this screw goes with this and I think this screw goes with this. And it was just like a little bit of a puzzle, which it didn't need to be. But I made it that way because I wasn't being diligent as I was doing the entire process. I would advise you to be diligent if you do this process. I was worried about that idea of somehow sanding off the history of the loom and losing the original history of the loom. But honestly, this loom has dings, it has scratches, it has huge chunks of wood that have been sort of big dents in it, all that kind of stuff. And so I didn't remove all of those things through the sanding process. I left a lot of scuff marks, ding marks, the original marks of the loom. And um, I'm perfectly okay with that. You can still tell that this loom is not a brand new loom. It has history to it, it has age to it, it has history to it, it has a story. I would love to hear if you have done a loom restoration or if this has motivated you to go and clean up your loom as well. I would love to hear about it. I do want to let you know it is a very intense process. I had a little bit of pressure because I had to clean up this entire area so that the kids could have a play date. So I had to clean up my loom area. Um, so I was under the gun to get it done. But I do advise, you know, keeping on a consistent schedule and a consistent rhythm to make sure that you progress towards getting it done. And I really appreciate and thank you guys for watching how I put this fanny loom back together. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe and come here every week to talk about something to do with the fiber arts. We are into knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing and I talk a lot about weaving, so I hope that you'll come back. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.